Hi everyone, my name is Rima and I teach the Art Fundamentals class at Visual Arts Brampton. For today's lesson, we're going to be drawing a still life together. So this is what you need for your drawing today. You need your sketchbook. You can also use a loose uh, sheet of paper. You need some sketching pencils. I have a grade H uh, pencil here and a grade 2B, um, which are my favorites to use. Um, but you can also use a graphite pencil and you may need an eraser. Use a white eraser. Okay, so uh, to draw a still life, we are going to use, we're going to need some objects to draw. A still life is uh, generally um, depicting uh, a collection of um, uh, objects or uh, things from nature. Uh, today we're, we're just going to use objects that we can find um, around our house. Okay, so uh, here are some of the things that I found. I found this um, interestingly shaped wooden box and I found um, this guy right here and I found a ceramic bird, a glass sphere, um, another little box, which could be interesting to, to draw with uh, the lid here. I found um, a pear. I like this pear. And I found my little birdcage decoration here. I think I like that one too. And I need something to contrast in size and I think maybe this vase might work for me. All right, so I need to pick uh, three items to draw today. So I think I'll put these aside and I'm pretty sure these are the three items that I'm going to draw. It's a nice uh, contrast with uh, size I have a tall vase, I have kind of a medium-sized birdcage here, and a smaller but still interestingly shaped pear. Okay, so now that I've uh, picked my objects, I need to create an interesting composition for me to draw. So what is a composition? A composition is how you arrange your items uh, for your drawing or your painting, or any type of artwork. So I would like my composition to be um, pleasing uh, to the eye and to be interesting. Um, so if I line my items up just in a row like this, it doesn't make for a very good picture. Um, so I'm going to try and change things around, uh, put the vase maybe towards the front um, and see if that works and just try two or three different uh, arrangements. And this is the arrangement that I like the best, where the pair is in the front and the birdcage is kind of to the side but behind the pair. And then I have the vase that is also slightly behind um, the birdcage, but it gives a nice contrast uh, with the, the other two objects. Okay, I'm going to uh, I'm going to look at how the items are going to uh, fit on the page. So, um, would it look better if I'm using uh, my page horizontally, or if I should maybe turn it around this way? Um, in my case, I think I'll use my sketchbook um, like that because I want my tall item, which is the vase, to kind of fit nicely in here. Also, I need to remember that when I'm going to start drawing, I don't want to start drawing at the bottom or way over here at the top or kind of push it to the side. I'm going to start uh, somewhere in the middle, uh, leaving a margin you know, leaving a good margin up here um, and down here. Okay, so ready? Let's go. I'm going to uh, pick my 
uh, grade H pencil, which is a very light pencil because I want to, um, to do a quick and light sketch at the beginning. What we're focusing on first is our, um, just the outlines of the objects that we have, just to make sure that our drawing is accurate and has good proportions, okay? I'm going to start with the object that is nearest to me, okay? And that would be the pear. Now, before I draw, I'm really going to look at my objects and make sure that I'm drawing what I'm seeing and not what I think I'm seeing. Just, um, just take your time and make sure that you're that you're paying attention. I don't want you to worry if you have extra lines. I'm not going to pick my eraser and start erasing right now. I'm just going to keep going. Make sure that my shapes are accurate. And I'm not worrying about the details too much. You're kind of blocking in your shapes right here, just to just to make sure that you have the uh, accurate proportions. So the object that is nearer to my eye is going to be lower than the other two. And this one may be just slightly a bit lower than that one, which is more to the back, okay? So now that I have the basic outline, I'm going to start adding in some, some details, okay? So, um, my bird cage has kind of an ellipse over here, which is mirrored over here as well.
And now I'm going to uh, start planning on adding details and shadows. So I just remember that I have some shadows over here. This way, this is where the light direction is. All right. So now I'm going to set aside my um, quick, uh, my light pencil and take my uh, slightly darker pencil. But if you're using your H3 pencil, you just keep going. And uh, using my, um, my slightly darker pencil, I'm going to start um, adding more details, refining the outline, and just um, starting to finish up my, my drawing, okay? So I'll pick as many details as I think will make my picture look better my drawing will look better. I don't have to draw every single thing that I see. I can pick the details that I think would work best and just maybe edit out some other things. It's called artistic license. Even though we're drawing from observation, but we can also decide So both the vase and the, um, the birdcage have kind of ellipses at the bottom here. Kind of gets lost, that edge kind of gets lost in the cast shadow. Okay, so now that I have mostly, most of the details that I want in my um, drawing. I'm going to start. I'm going to start uh, figuring out where my shadows are. We talked about the cast. We talked about all sorts of um, uh, shadows and lights and highlights in our last lesson. We talked about how when the light hits an object, it projects a shadow, it casts a shadow. So this is the, the cast shadow part. There's also the form shadow, which is where the um, uh, the dark parts of your objects are. 
remember those and those tend to be on the other side from where your light is coming so if my light is coming from here which it is and I have another light coming from here so it kind of uh, makes the, the shadows a little more complicated but um, these are the form shadows that I'm seeing mostly on the pair which is why I kind of chose this to to draw because it I knew it was going to give me some interesting uh, nooks and crannies here So the shadows on the object will also include the half tones or the lighter shadows and these will help me define or uh, bring more depth and volume to my to my drawing. can use something to smudge the um, the shadows a little bit if I feel that they're too sharp and I don't need to go overboard I shouldn't be um, darkening the whole my whole drawing there's no point there we go and the um, the glass fuzz is a little bit harder to figure out where the shadows are but I can kind of see some reflections over here so I'm going to pick those out with my shading glass makes some really wonky shapes which is why you can't really see the edge of the table very much in the back here there's a bit of a cast shadow here because the light is kind of on top of it so now I'll just maybe neaten up a little bit of uh, the outline just to make it more give it my own personal style Now is the time to bring out the eraser and just maybe uh, neaten up the lines that I couldn't get rid of by shading over them or going over them and also neaten up some of the smudges that I that always happen especially when you're using a darker uh, pencil it's, that makes more uh, dust and here we go this is my drawing of a still life of some things that I 
found in my studio and I'm done now don't forget to uh, don't forget to read the lesson uh, that is accompanying this for more details and also for some next steps um, what you can do uh, with a still life project thank you for watching and be sure to like comment and subscribe and we'll see you next time Thank you.